Welcome to this course on how to create a single page portfolio website from scratch. This is the perfect course for freelancers, agencies, and service businesses who want to showcase their services and attract new clients. In the course, we're going to build this actual website from scratch and we'll do everything step by step from start to finish so that you can see exactly how to do it yourself. Let's take a tour of this website that we're going to be building. So up here we have this nice beautiful call to action area with a big uh, call to action button. Then we have down here some information about our services. As you continue to scroll, here is some uh, graphical representations of our skills. And then a place for uh, some of our recent projects. And uh, these can link to the different website itself or it could link to a place on this website for instance for this project we actually have uh, created a page so if we click here it takes us to this new page specifically for this project where there is more information about the project as well as some other portfolio items related to this project as we continue to scroll down you'll see that here are some testimonials And then we have an area to display our blog posts if you so desire. Then here, uh, close to the bottom, we have this nice contact area with our contact information and a clean, uh, simple contact form. And then here in the bottom, we have some nice widgets, a little About Me widget, some links to some of the projects or sites maybe we're involved with, as well as our social media profiles. And then uh, some other links to the latest blog posts or tutorials. We have this elevator button, takes it to the top. And then right here we have this custom menu or navigation bar that will take us to specific areas of our site, which is perfect for a single page website like this one. This site is also completely responsive, so it's going to look good on any screen size, tablet, or smartphone. And so this is an emulation of what the site will look like on an iPhone. As you can see, uh, it has adjusted to fit the width of the screen perfectly so that it looks good for any users, no matter what device they are using. So this is the website we're going to be building in the course. If you have any questions along the way, feel free to post them in the discussions. And best of luck. In order to customize our website, we're going to be using WordPress. And WordPress is web software that lets you customize your site and you can do so without having to write code. So it makes it a lot easier to build your website, but WordPress is still very flexible and powerful. And so right now I'm signed into my WordPress dashboard and this is where I would come to make any changes to my site to add, for instance, blog posts or to uh, change the appearance of the site. And there's also something very important called plugins. So this is just an example of something uh, that makes WordPress such a good development tool. So with plugins, it's uh, a way to extend the functionality of your site. It's kind of like, you know, you have a computer, your computer can uh, do certain things, but you install different programs to extend the functionality of your computer. So to do different things that don't come natively on your computer, you may install a program similar with a plugin. A plugin will help you extend the functionality of your website. So for instance, let's say I want to add uh, some share buttons. One of my favorite plugins for this is Mass Share. And so it's free to use. So I'm just going to hit install now, activate the plugin. And now here it's installed. Now I just need to uh, adds or customize certain settings to make sure it shows up real quickly. So uh, I want it to show as many buttons as I have selected and the buttons I want it to show are the Facebook and Twitter. So I'll save changes. And then in visual, I'm gonna go to location position and I want it to appear on all posts. And I'll hit save changes. So here's how a blog post will look like beforehand. And now if I hit refresh, it should uh, implement that plugin. And so here you can see the Mash Share plugin, which adds Mashable style uh, share buttons, where there's a counter. If someone shares it, it's going to uh, show here. 
and that you know they can just click on the Facebook or click on the Twitter to easily share this article. And so this is just an example of why WordPress is so awesome because without having to write any code, I could uh, install a plugin and voila, I have these share buttons here on my site. So uh, WordPress is a great way to build websites and that's what we're going to be using to build this website. Before we can start customizing our website, we first need to get it live on the internet. And there are three main things we need to do to get our website all set up on the internet so that we can begin customizing it. First of all, we need to register a domain name. And a domain name is just an address. So facebook.com, that is an address that directs people to Facebook's website. So after we register a domain name, we then need to set up web hosting. And web hosting is, think of it as a remote computer that stores all of your content. So when we are uh, putting images and uh, videos, any type of content on our website, uh, those things need to be stored somewhere. And web hosting is just basically renting a remote com computer so that we can store our content on there so that when people visit our, our website, they're able to view all of our content. After that, we will need to install WordPress. And uh, once we install WordPress, we can then start customizing the site with WordPress. And luckily for us, WordPress is 100% free to use. So once we do these three things, we'll have our website live on the internet and ready to start customizing. One of the first things you're gonna need to do when you're building a website is register a domain name. And a domain name is just an address to take you to a website. So if we want to go to Facebook's website, for instance, up here we type in facebook.com. So this right here highlighted is their domain name, and it's just the address that takes us to their website. So you need a specific, unique address to take people to your website, and that's what the domain name is. So domain names you can register. They usually cost about 10 bucks a year. Uh, you can register from places like Namecheap, GoDaddy, One and One. I've used all three of those services. Namecheap, in my opinion, is the best. It's cheap, really easy to use. And for any of those services, they have usually have a bar where you can put in the domain name you want, and you can check to see if it's available or not. So let's say I want to buy Hoku's website. dot com. Hit search. As you can see, hokuswebsite.com is available. So if I wanted to, I could just buy it right now. So first thing you're going to want to do is go to namecheap.com. And there's a link in the description of the video for Namecheap you can go to as well. Then just put in your domain right here in the search bar. search and domain or name cheap is a really great website for domains because one they're really cheap and two it's really easy to use okay so make sure it's available then just add it to cart once it's added view cart so you can get it for multiple years I just want one and you can turn on or off auto renew at any time so I could turn that off later if I want and this is a free year and doesn't auto renew awesome and any of this stuff if you want it go for it but I usually just want the domain nothing else so I'll hit confirm order and then if you don't have an account just go ahead and uh, fill that out and hit create account and continue now just some additional information you have to fill out I'm gonna do it as an individual and uh, yeah so just go ahead and fill all that stuff out and hit continue. Okay, so now just go ahead and make sure this is the right contact information and if you need to change it for some reason maybe billing is different then go ahead and do that. If not you can just if you want to save this for later and uh, then hit continue. Then you're gonna put in your credit card information and make sure your billing address is correct and this is automatically in on the right setting so you don't even have to click any of that you can make this your default uh, payment and then just uh, hit continue again okay so you can just review your order real quick looks all good 
So that's it. Just hit pay now and you're done. If you want to make your own website, you're going to need web hosting. And I'm going to explain to you what that is using Pinterest. So after uploading this picture from your computer to Pinterest, you could actually delete the picture from your computer and everyone would still be able to see it on Pinterest. That's because once you upload it to Pinterest, it's actually stored on Pinterest's computers. And these computers that are used to store web content are called servers. This is a picture of a typical server rack. And so for your website, you're going to have pictures, text, you might have videos, all sorts of different content. And that too needs to be stored on a server. So you could either buy your own server and set it up yourself, but that's pretty complicated. So what most people do is they simply rent a space on someone else's servers. And this is called web hosting because they are hosting your web content on their servers. So go to HostGator.com and I'll put a link in the description. And HostGator makes it really easy to get started right away and it's very cheap. So that's why I like HostGator. Click Get Started Now. And then if you scroll down here, the different plans. Hatchling plan, Hatchling plan is a little bit cheaper than Baby Plan, but with Baby you can put as many domains as you want onto this one plan. And so for that reason, I think the Baby Plan is the best. You can buy a couple years in advance or go monthly. So let's just do monthly for now and hit sign up now. So you can buy your domain through HostGator. So let's say my name's Hoku, so I want to buy hokuswebsite.com. And it's about $13 a, a year if you buy it through HostGator. Uh, Namecheap.com is actually a few dollars cheaper, so you could buy it through another service. If, you're buy, if you were to buy it through another service, just hit I already own this domain and then uh, put it in. You're going to need a username and PIN number and this will auto-populate correctly. You don't need to touch that. You'll need to put in your billing information. These I do not believe are necessary, so you can uncheck them. If you really feel the need, then uh, leave them checked. And there's a preloaded 20% off coupon. So this is... 20% uh, off your first bill though so if you see it's usually $10 a month but they're gonna give it to you for $8 for the first month for the first bill so if you scroll up see right here it's January currently so the second month February it goes back to $10 a month so they've actually hooked us up with a better coupon you type in build without code one, you're going to see this discount jump up about eight. So it went from two dollars to almost ten dollars. So your first bill would only be one cent. Then after that, it goes back to the regular ten dollars a month. However, if you want to get an even bigger discount, you can, but you'd have to pay more in advance. So let's put this to 12 months. So this is if you were to buy. 12 months in advance, you'd still get that same $10 discount with this code. But if you do build without code, with no one, just build without code, hit validate, this is actually a 25% off discount. So it's 25% off your first payment. If you're buying a year in advance, then it's 25% off this amount, which adds up to almost $30 off. And the ultimate discount is the same coupon code, the 25% off your first payment. So you can see in the second year it goes to uh, back to ten dollars a month but that's not for a whole year the ultimate discount would be buying three years in advance 36 months 25 percent off that amount is almost seventy dollars so that's how you would save the most money but obviously the downside is you'd have to pay in advance so if you want to do monthly i would do the bill without code one And there you go, it'll be just one cent. But if you don't care about paying in advance, then uh, I would say pay in advance in three years, obviously, is how you're going to get the most off and have just build without code at 25% off your first payment. And that's how you'll save the most money. And so, obviously, you have to pay more up front. There is, however, a 45 day money back guarantee. So, 
let's say you pay three years in advance and after a month you realize you don't need the website anymore you see right here every web hosting plan comes with a 45 day money back guarantee so you could actually get a refund if you uh, want to within 45 days even if you do buy three years up front so that's how you get the cheapest uh, hosting possible and once you decide on your hosting plan fill all that stuff out just hit here and hit checkout now and you're done you'll get an email with your account information however it does sometimes go to spam so check your spam folder Now that you have your domain name and web hosting set up, let's go ahead and connect everything together. So go to Namecheap.com and then just sign into your account. When you sign in, it will take you to your dashboard and then just click on the domain name uh, that you want to hook up to your uh, web hosting. Just click manage on the right. And then up here in the right, uh, click on advanced DNS. Here on the top row, domain name server type, it's set to Namecheap default. Let's just hit edit here on the right and then click on custom. And now after clicking on custom, we have now have these fields where we can put in name server one, name server two. And so if we just hop over to that HostGator email that we got, it has right here name server one. and name server 2 then just hit save changes let's uh, install WordPress and we'll get your site live on the internet so go to this HostGator email you got with your account information and right here where it says your control panel let's click on that link it's gonna ask for a username and password and these come from the email so username right here so just copy this Copy this password right here, paste it and log in. It's going to take you to your control panel for HostGator. Here in the control panel, I can either click right here where it says get started with WordPress today, or if you scroll down a little bit, software and services, quick install, both of those will take you to the same place. Just click on that. And now if we scroll down, install WordPress, click that. Scroll down again, install WordPress for free. They have some other things they're trying to sell, but all you need to do is click install WordPress, install for free. And here it takes you, and it, so if you've never registered a domain before, or if you never, sorry, installed WordPress on a domain before, for the very first time, usually it will auto-populate in here. I have a ton of domains and subdomains, so I'm just gonna pick the one that I want to uh, install WordPress on. But uh, it should auto populate. If not, just use the drop down and select the domain name that uh, where you're going to install WordPress. Well, yeah, and again, if it's the first time, then you only have one. Then in here, put an email, the uh, blog title, which you will be able to change later. And then a username, and then your first and last name, and then just click install WordPress. and it is all complete so click view credentials and so this is how you get to the site you uh, just installed WordPress on so let's click on that and so right here I can put in my username and password to log in and start editing it and here's the username so I'll put that in here and then here's the password and make sure you don't uh, accidentally exit out of this browser or this tab or anything so that you have the username and password although a lot of times they'll send you an email with this uh, these credentials but make sure you keep track of them so that you can log in and then I'm just gonna log in and now WordPress is installed on my site and this is now the admin area where I can I can customize my 
uh, new WordPress site. When you first sign up for HostGator, they give you a random string of letters and numbers as your password. And when you first install WordPress, they do the same thing. They give you a random string of letters and numbers as your password. But you can change that to whatever you want. So I'm going to show you how to change your password for each of those things. So for HostGator, just log into your cPanel. And if you go to that email with your account info, if you click on this link to your cPanel and then just use your username and this password to log in. Once you're in, scroll down a tiny bit and under preferences, click on change password. Then you're just going to input your old password from the email, copy that, paste it in here, and then put in your new password and repeat it. Leave these unchecked and hit change your password now and you're all done for HostGator. For WordPress, you're just going to click on this link to get to your WordPress admin and I've already clicked on that and put in the username from this screen then I'm going to get the password from this screen paste it in here and hit login then I'm going to go to users and hit all users here on the left there's my uh, myself I'm going to hit edit scroll down a little bit and where it says new password, I'm going to put in my new password, repeat it, and then hit update profile, and you're all done. Here is our fresh new WordPress site, and it is using a default theme, and themes determine the overall design of the site, overall look and feel, the color scheme, layout, that kind of thing. So if we want to change how our WordPress site is looking, and change the design then first thing we're going to want to do is change the theme and so let's go back to the dashboard and if we are already signed in to WordPress then uh, we'll have this bar up here when we go to our actual site and then we could either click dashboard here or we could just add to the end of our domain forward slash WP hyphen admin and this will also take us to the dashboard area of WordPress back here we'll go to appearance and themes. I'm going to click on add new and then in here I'm going to search for the theme Pixova Light and we'll just hit uh, click on it and so here we can actually preview what uh, this theme is going to look like on our site and it already has some uh, dummy content in there so we can get it kind of a feel for what this theme is going to be like so it's a pretty nice uh, theme here and uh, so we're just going to go ahead and hit install and then we're going to activate it and so now it's active let's uh, go back to the actual site itself and here you can see our site looks completely different because we've put in this brand new theme we can just get right into actually customizing this theme to uh, make it exactly how we want it and so to do so we can go to customize up here or if we were to go back to the dashboard here in the dashboard on the left under appearance we can get to the customize button here as well and so that's going to open up this customizer where we can make some custom changes to the theme and see those changes happening in real time so we'll just start from the top and work our way, way, uh, work our way down so theme options, I'm going to click on that, click on general, company name. So if you're an agency, you know, you can put your agency's name here. If you're a freelancer, you can put your just your regular name here. I'm making this as if it was for my own freelance website. So I'm just going to put my own name in there. Uh, copyright, I'll leave that as is. Preloader. So if you go back to the actual site. When I hit refresh, you'll see it'll say loading in the middle of the screen. So let me just hit refresh and look for that loading there it is right there so it's saying loading before any of the content is loaded and what it's doing is basically waiting for everything to get loaded before it shows you the screen so it doesn't uh, you know show you the words before the images are is uh, completely loaded um, so it looks pretty clean because as soon as it's when it's actually done 
you know, you see everything in its finished form versus uh, if the preloader's off, you might see the words first and then the button and then finally the background image. However, the problem with it is sometimes if it takes a long time to load, then the people will just see loading in the middle of the screen before seeing any content. And sometimes that can turn people off and they can hit the back button before they see anything. Whereas if it start to show if it starts to show the words and you know a button and stuff, then they can see, okay, well the site's just it's just gonna take a little bit, but it's uh it's in pro it's in progress versus if you just says loading for a lot of seconds, you might think, well, maybe it stopped loading because it's not showing anything at all. So personally I like to disable the preloader. We'll do that. And then animation. So uh, if you saw that little jump, as we scroll down, things kind of the content kind of jumps into place. There's these animations. I want to keep those. And then we have breadcrumbs. And so what the breadcrumbs are is if we scroll down to a post. Let me open up one of these posts. Here we can see it has like kind of a trail of how you got to the post. So it's within the category of uncategorized, and we're at or in the actual blog post hello world so that's what the breadcrumb is showing this kind of paper trail and uh, I actually don't want that enabled either so I'm gonna hit disabled for that leave that as is and now so I'm seeing my changes happen in real time but I have to save it before I can exit so I'm just gonna come up here and hit save and publish let's continue customizing this theme so I'm gonna scroll up and hit on this back button right there then I'll click on contact details and right here I can put in my email and then phone number and address and I'll just put my city okay and as it's starting to reflect so let's go back to the main part of the site and if we scroll down right here we can see it reflects the changes we've made as uh, our city and the address phone number and email now we'll go back again and go into site identity and if you change site title and tagline it's actually not gonna show up anywhere on this theme um, but site icon will uh, show so uh, when you change site icon or add a site icon Basically what it does is adds this little icon up here, up here in the tab. It's also called a favicon. So I'm gonna select file, I'll upload a file, and I'm just gonna put a picture of myself since it's a site for me as a freelancer. Select that. Crop, everything's good. And now you can see it's pretty small, but uh, it's just my picture up there in the tab. And uh, yeah, again, I want to make sure these changes get saved, so I'm going to hit Save and Publish. Let's continue customizing the theme. So I'll hit the back right here. And then these other ones, background image, static front page, breadcrumbs, I'm going to leave those as is and hit back again. And then I'm going to click on Section vis Visibility. And so there's different sections of our site. So for instance, we have recent works and we can uncheck this so it doesn't exist if we want to. Right here, we can uncheck the work section so that uh, this part would disappear. We want all these sections though for this particular site except for the team one. If you have an agency, then you probably want to keep this uh, team section so you can put your different team members. But since this is for uh, just me as a freelancer, I'm going to uncheck this to uh, disable the team section and now it is no longer there so now I'll just hit back again and go into the CTA or call to action section which is up here at the top and so it has a nice header image but I'm gonna put in my own image so click on that and then I'll click on add new image upload files select files and I'll grab my uh, background image Now that it's just finishing up loading, select and crop. Uh, it's by default cropping it to the uh, size that it wants, which is uh, 1920 by 1080 pixels. So uh, now my background image is there and it's, it 
doesn't look like it's working yet, but uh, sometimes the customizer will do its best to reflect the changes, but it doesn't quite work. So if it looks like it's kind of broken like this, then you can just hit save and publish, then come to your actual site, hit refresh, and here it looks like it's working just fine. We have that nice new background image. Continuing on, I'm going to hit the back button and go into the CTA text area. And this is the text that appears right here. So I'm just going to get rid of the subtitle completely. And for the main call to action text, I'm going to put in my own uh, text. And you can see now it's updated. So I'll go back and then go to button. And I'm just going to put uh, work with me right here and you can see there it is and uh, I actually want it to link to another area on the same page I want it to link to the contact area so that when they click on this it just takes them to the contact section um, and so to do that uh, we're going to use something called anchor links and so if we go back to this uh, part let's uh, look up here in the menu and uh, so if I hover over this the menu or navigation uh, bar kind of pops out and when I click on one of these buttons it's actually not going to take us anywhere off the page it's just going to scroll us down to the point in the page so contact if I click on that it takes us down here to the contact us section and the way you do that is pretty much you uh, put a tag on this section saying this section is called contact and then uh, when you make your link, you have this link to the, the uh, area of the page with the tag of contact. And by doing so, then whenever I click on it, then it will just take me to that area in the page. And so for this theme, they already have pretty much the tags all uh, created. And the tags are just the names right here. So uh, if you want to get to the contact area, the, co the tag name is... Uh, contact, news, team, testimonials, about. The only one that is different is instead of being recent works, this one's just called works. And so the way you uh, link to uh, that area or the way you use that tag name is you just get your actual domain name. So I'm going to copy that, paste it in here, uh, make sure it has a forward slash. And then after the forward slash, you just put the pound sign or number sign and then write the name of the uh, area that you want to link to so for instance we want it to go down to the contact area and so uh, it's just called contact as it shows here in the menu so I'm gonna put contact so we have just our regular domain name pound sign and then the tag name and so again this is called an anchor link because it's a uh, linking to a specific spot in the same page it's not taking us outside of the page so I'll just hit save and publish and we'll just test this out so come back here I'm gonna hit refresh and you can see uh, the call to action area has changed so this should now take me to the contact area so I'm gonna click on it and it worked it took us down to the contact us section let's go back hit that back button click on what we do and this is going to be this section right here where we're, that we're going to edit so for the first one I actually want it to say web design so that's good and then I'm gonna put in my own description and you can see it updates right there go back what we do number two oops if I could there we go put that in along with a description and then I'll get my last one and um, one thing to keep in mind is when you're choosing a big header image make sure it's dark or uh, edit it to make it darker or something like that so that you can read these words otherwise it's going to be really hard for your visitors to actually read these words so uh, now that I have all that, I'll just go ahead and hit save and publish. Let's go back and hit back again. And now go into the pie chart section, which is uh, this part right here. And so 
we can put a title and then a little subtitle and another block and uh, even kind of a quote block text um, but I actually don't want any of this so I'm just going to delete all of it so I'll just delete that delete that go back section text delete all of this and then the block quote delete all of this so now it just goes straight into our skills and then here we have the uh, different skills so uh, section chart number one I'm going to put my skills in here and number two another skill number three And let's put the last one. Okay, and as you can see, you could change this color if you want, uh, but I'm just going to leave those as is. And everything is updated as I want. It's saying the correct uh, words down here. So I'll just go ahead and hit save and publish. Now let's move on to recent works. So we'll go down to recent works and uh, section title is good. I'm just going to leave it as is. And now I'm going to change out uh, the images and then these logos down here as well as put different links so that when they click see project it will take them to uh, the page for the actual project. So let's start with project one and I change image, upload, select file grab this image and uh, I've already cropped this image ahead of time so it's 258 by 407 so uh, that's why it's you know gonna appear uh, very tall like a portrait so uh, you may want to crop your images ahead of time and then project logo I'm just going to put in an image and hit choose image and so there we go and then last thing is I'm going to put in a link so you can have it linked to wherever you want it to I want to have it linked to uh, the actual home page for build without code put that in there okay so now uh, if they hover over it obviously you can see it, it uh, changes a little bit and then if they hit C project it will take them to this link and so now I'm going to do the same thing for uh, some of these other ones. I'm going to skip project uh, number two. Uh, we'll do that in, uh, after we do these other ones because we're going to do something a little bit different. So for project three, I'm going to hit change image, select files, and this one's for a site called Well Gifted. Put in that image. Put in the logo. And for the link, let's grab that, put that in, go back, and now we'll just do our, our uh, fourth one. So let's change this image. Put in the lo our logo. And then lastly, just the uh, project URL. So those three are done. And so uh, for this last one, so we're, we're still going to put the image and logo. So let me actually just do that real quickly. Um, and this last one is for a project uh, or a company I started in college called uh, Dekidu Studios. And if I could find the, there we go. And uh, Dekidu Studios is a company uh, 
we started that uh, makes how to iPhone apps. So iPhone apps that will teach you how to do a certain skill like uh, how to play bass guitar. And uh, we didn't really have, I mean we have a website for it but um, mostly it's, it's strictly for mobile users um, because we have multiple apps and such. And uh, yeah, so I don't really want to direct them to a website actually. What I would like to do is create a page and have uh, this direct them to the page. So when they say C project, it directs them to a page where I can put a lot of different stuff uh, about Dakiji Studios. Maybe put a paragraph of text and then maybe put some images so they can kind of see some of the work I did on uh, this project. So instead of uh, just linking to some external website, I just want to link it to a page that we'll create in a second on this same website uh, where they can see the work I did with uh, Dikidu Studios. So uh, for now I'm just going to save this and then we'll create a page for Dikidu Studios. So I'm going to exit out of the customizer just by hitting that X. And so here in the dashboard I could either go to uh, hover over new and then click page or I could go to pages right here and add new. And uh, it will take me to this editor where I can create and edit uh, any uh, new page. And so I'm going to call this page just Dikidu Studios. I'm going to add an image at the very top, this one right here. And uh, we can change the size. I'll leave it as medium though. And alignment, I want this to just be right in the center. Insert that. Hit enter a couple times. And then I'm going to uh, add a paragraph of text about Dikidu Studios couple more enters and now I'm going to add a gallery of images so that people can kind of see some of my work I did on Dikidu Studios. So uh, as you can see I hit add media, create gallery and I'm going to upload some more files. And so the files I'm going to upload, let's see here, be this through this one. So these six right here. So I'll say okay, or I'll hit open. And so you can see it's uploading them all uh, together. And now that they're done, that was pretty fast actually. I'm gonna hit create a new gallery. And so we can have this gallery show up in uh, with different columns and such. I'm gonna have it just do six columns. And size, so uh, by default it's set to thumbnail. I'm gonna put that to medium. And I'm going to make the order random, actually. So we'll do that. And then I'll just hit Insert Gallery. So there we go. And now I can just preview this. So I'll hit Preview. And I scroll down. Here we go. I have that uh, Dakidu Studios uh, logo. And then this little paragraph of text about it. And then a bunch of different uh, images of some of my work I did at Dakidu Studios. So now I have a nice little... Uh, portfolio page specifically for Dakiti Studios. So I'll go ahead and publish this. Hit that. And again I can uh, view the, the published page. Um, and again everything looks good. So I'm just going to copy the URL to this page. And then I'm going to go back to the customizer. Now we'll go to recent works. Project number two. And right here for project URL, I'm going to put in the page for uh, for the Dikidu Studios page that uh, I just created. So now uh, this right here is going to link to that actual page. So I'll hit save and publish. And let's actually look at the site. So let's uh, refresh it. And if I scroll down, here you can see the different projects that I added. And at Dikidu Studios, if I hit C project, it takes me to this Dakidu Studios page that I just created uh, with you know some of these images and this uh, text that I wrote up about Dakidu Studios. Let's close some of these tabs and then go back to the customizer. And we'll hit back, back, and then we'll go to the testimonials section. And so here in the testimonials section, we're going to change the title. I'm just going to put 
testimonials and I'm going to delete the subtitle. Now it's updated and so they'll be able to scroll through these different testimonials. Let's go back and uh, I actually only just wanted to show just two of them. So I'm going to delete everything in uh, testimonial, this testimonial and testimonial four. I'll do the same thing. And testimonial three as well. And then let's put on put in our own testimonials for number one and two. So for number one, who is it going to be? The mystery character. And it is a guy I've worked with before. Uh, might look familiar to you. He has a just a really familiar face. John Brames and uh, put uh, well gifted and there it is and then so I'll go back testimonial two click on that click on that get my image and uh, just FYI. For some reason, if it's not a perfect square, it's going to crop it, uh, or it's going to skew it. So ahead of time, make sure you crop it so that it's a perfect square. This one is like 183 by 183 pixels. Because, um, yeah, if not, it's going to get skewed. Okay. So now I have my testimonials. My glove, let's say, our company that we... Uh, worked with them with or maybe uh, the clients company when you did work for them so okay it's we've got our testimonials in there uh, the image again make sure your image is a perfect square so that it doesn't get skewed and then name and you can put company as well down here and then right here you can put uh, the actual text uh, or quote that uh, the person said even though it's labeled as testimonial person name twice this one down here is the uh, description or the uh, actual testimonial itself that the person gave so just make sure that we save this so I'll hit save and publish hope everything is going well so far and that you're not falling asleep like this guy if you've run into any issues so far feel free to leave your questions in the comments and if you think you'd benefit from more in-depth training on WordPress, check out my premium course at course.buildwithoutcode.com where you'll learn all the ins and outs of WordPress along with other web tips like SEO or how to make a logo. All right, back to the course. Now let's move on to the blog or news section. So we'll hit back, back, and click on latest news section which is right here and so pretty much our blog posts get added to this section and uh, in here I just have to change the title if I want to and I want to show uh, some different video tutorials here so rather than blog posts they're more just video tutorials so I'm going to uh, kind of label that website tutorials and give it a little subtitle in here and so now you can see the changes reflected right there I'll save that and then let's actually create a couple uh, posts so that they show up here. So let's exit out of the customizer. And to add a new post, you just hit add or hover over new and hit post. Or in the dashboard, you can do the same thing by going to posts and then add new. And so the name of this post is it's a tutorial on how to make a portfolio website. Put that there. Put a little. Uh, blurb about it and then if you have the YouTube URL you can just paste it directly in the editor and it will automatically embed this video player so that's uh, pretty cool and then I want to have a featured image and the featured image serves as the thumbnail and it usually goes to the top of a blog blog post and you'll see uh, that in action in just a second so let me get my thumb my uh, featured image and hit set featured image and okay so let's just go ahead and uh, publish this 
And now that it's published, let's take a look at our home page. So come over to here, let's scroll down a little bit. Here we have, it's changed to say website tutorials and uh, it's using this image from uh, the featured image I, I put in there so that it has a thumbnail because if not, if I didn't put the uh, featured image in here then it, would, it wouldn't have a, an image, it would just show the text and I want that so I like that and so if I click on it now here is that post again the featured image goes at the top um, the little blurb and then right here is the embedded uh, video or the actual tutorial itself now with this post that I created there is one thing that I don't really like I'm, it's a little nitpicky but um, I want to have the featured image so that uh, you know when someone goes to the whoops when someone goes to the latest news section uh, they can see that thumbnail image I want that to appear but I don't want it to appear here at the top because then it's kind of repetitive you see this and then you see this and it's just yeah just repetitive and uh, you know we already have an image up here too so it's just kind of there for no reason so what I would like is to have uh, the video show up over here at the top instead but I still want to have this uh, featured image uh, for the thumbnail and so luckily we are able to do that using a certain plugin so we're gonna go to plugins and add new and then here name of the plugin is featured video plus so we'll install it and activate it and it's completely free and so now that I've done that let's go back to posts and we'll go into this post and now that I've activated that plugin you see this little uh, tool tip right here so basically um, we can just put in the URL of the video right into here and it will uh, replace this uh, featured image right here. Pretty much anywhere where a featured image will go it will be replaced by the video that we put in. So I'm going to uh, grab that URL no longer need it in here because it's going to be showing up at the top and I'll put, put it in here and as it loads there it pulls it up and let's hit update. Now I'll hit refresh right here and refresh right here and so where the featured image used to be, now we have this featured video. So it's just right at the top, which is nice because, uh, you know, as soon as they scroll down, there's the tutorial. And here, now, instead of being a featured image, it's also uh, just the thumbnail of the, or actually an embedded video player. So they can just click it right here and immediately start watching it. So uh, that's pretty cool. I actually, though, don't want this, so some more pickiness. I don't want this to be a video player though, because it's like really small, it's really cramped, and um, you know, with my tutorials, I'm doing like a screen cast of the entire screen, so it's like they couldn't see it when it's super small. And uh, yeah, I would just rather have a have it be an image, and then so that when they click in, then they'd be taken to this screen where they can have a nice uh, experience with the video player, not on just some cramped little thing. Although I know they can hit this, but still and so uh, if I go back to plugins so here we see this is the new plugin we installed we'll hit media settings and I believe you can also get to there by going to yeah, settings and then media um, but uh, so these are some configurations for that plugin if I check this right here when viewing single page posts and, or pages that means it pretty much is only going to do it it's only going to replace the featured image on the actual post itself. So all I did was check that, then I'm going to hit save changes. And let's refresh both of these pages. And so this page still has the uh, regular uh, embedded video instead of the featured image, just like it was before. But now here, instead of uh, showing an actual embedded video, it is just showing a featured image which is exactly what I wanted. So it's only replacing it right here. And so that's how that plugin works.
now that the featured video plugin is installed let's create one more post uh, so you can kind of see it in action again and so let me just close out of this and we'll hit new post and so post name I'm going to create a website from scratch and let's grab the description paste it in here and then so uh, I can just get my URL for the YouTube video and just paste it right into this featured video and you'll notice so right now I haven't uploaded any featured image for this video but when I put in that URL another cool thing the plugin will do is it will automatically get the uh, pretty much the thumbnail of the YouTube video and put that into my featured image which is really nice because then I don't have to uh, upload separately another featured image it just saves a little bit of time so let's hit publish and uh, we'll hit refresh on our home page and then we'll hit view post to see what this post looks like so here you can see it's added uh, this uh, new post with a, a nice um, featured image that it automatically pulled from the YouTube video and then the actual post itself has the nice big video player up here at the top and uh, there's no you can't see any other featured image it's being replaced by this video so that you know there's no uh, repetitiveness because uh, we don't want to show a featured image of the same featured image that's already showing on the video and so yeah that's just a great another plugin and we've added our two posts so uh, you can kind of get a feel for what it's going to look like when you add any type of posts to this section. You may have noticed here on these posts that there's this sidebar on the right. And this sidebar has different uh, things like recent posts, recent comments, archives. And uh, each of these things is kind of its own separate block of content. And these are called widgets. So for instance, the search bar is its own widget, recent posts is its own widget, archives is, is its own widget. And these are kind of uh, modular, meaning they can be like taken out, you can put new ones in. Um, you, can you can completely customize this bar to have whatever widgets you want. And you can even customize the widgets as well. And so to do so, we're gonna go over here and you can hover over it and then click on widgets. Or if you were back in the actual dash bar, dashboard excuse me you go to appearance and then widgets and so here we have the sidebar and so you can see uh, all of these different things are in here and that's why uh, it shows a search bar recent posts and comments and such um, but I actually want to take some of these out um, I'm gonna pretty much take out all of these except for recent posts and search so I'll just click and drag click and drag click and drag to take these widgets off and I can customize uh, recent posts if I want. So I'd say, I can say recent tutorials instead. And then I'll just hit save. And uh, I want to add a widget of my own. So I'm just going to get this one is just a blank, pretty much canvas, blank canvas of just text. And I'm going to say uh, get in touch so that no matter where they are in the site, it's really easy for them to. Uh, get in touch so I'll hit save for that and then let's come back and enter one of these blog posts or tutorial posts and if we scroll down now we can see on the sidebar we have you know the search and recent tutorials and it says recent tutorials instead of recent posts we've gotten rid of some of the other widgets and then we added this text widget which just shows uh, our phone number and email and as you can see they're uh, on the same line and it's not it, email is not on a separate line and I want it to do that so I'm going to go to the text one and uh, put click on this automatically add paragraphs hit save now when I hit refresh you can see the email has jumped to its own line uh, rather than starting right after the phone number on the same line of, as that one now let's edit the footer and we scroll down here's the footer and these little blocks of information are, you guessed it, just widgets. So these are just different widgets. And so we can customize the footer by rearranging or removing or adding widgets to the footer area, area excuse me, just like we did to this sidebar right here. So to do so, 
we are going to go back to the dashboard and to the widgets area. And so one of the first things I want to do is add a text widget to this uh, sidebar of the footer. The only problem is if I want to add content, we don't have an, any editor uh, buttons. So for instance, when we are editing a post, as we're adding content, we have these buttons up here which make it easy for us to add the type of content we want. I can add an image, uh, you know, we can change the color of the text, that kind of thing. But not with these widgets. It doesn't give us that functionality. There is, however, a plugin that will give us that functionality. So I'm going to go to Plugins, Add New, and look for WP Editor Widget. Install and activate. And now, when I go back to Widgets, uh, in addition to just being able to add a text, regular plain text widget, I can add a rich text. So I'm going to drag that in. And so with text, you know, it's just blank and I can't really uh, format the content very well. But with a rich text uh, widget, I can. So I just hit edit content. And now when I'm adding my content, you can see I have all these buttons up here. So I have a nice editor. It makes it really easy for me to format it the way I want to. So I'll just drag the text one off. And so here I'm going to put, uh, hi, I'm Hoku. It's kind of like an about me little snippet and uh, check there so that it outputs the title so it actually shows the title when I uh, save this widget edit content and I'm going to add an image and I want the alignment to be set to none and uh, size thumbnail insert into post there we go and then little brief uh, sentence or two about me save and close and now when we go back to our site scroll down to the bottom and here in our footer I have the image and some text and now we can see obviously the text is uh, by default gray and gray on gray is not easy to read so luckily for us we have uh, this rich text widget, widget, which makes it really easy to format that text. So I can just highlight all this and make it white and hit save and close. And now it's white. Now it's white. And uh, so that's great. Also, the image seems to be a clickable link. So if we click on it, it uh, shows kind of a the actual image. And I don't want that to do that. So um, I'm going to go back into the uh, widget click on the image and here it has uh, this link I'm just gonna delete it so that it is no longer linked to anything and so now if I hit save and close come back hit refresh and it's no longer a link and then my bio is in white text so it's easy to read and so now I have this nice little uh, kind of about me widget here at the bottom now let's go ahead and customize the rest of the footer and you'll you may have noticed that there already is some widgets in these uh, different locations in the footer, even though, for instance, in sidebar number two, there's actually not a widget in there, and that's just because it has just some dummy content that's preloaded, so you can see what it will look like. But uh, when we put a widget of our own, this will disappear, and it will only show our actual widget that we have in its place. So uh, for sidebar number two. I want to add another rich text widget, and I'm just going to call this uh, Sites I'm Running, and have it show some of my other sites. I'll put Title, click on Edit Content, and so I'll grab uh, the domain names for some of my other sites. <clears throat> and so if I were to save this as, as is, come back here, hit Refresh. You can see that one, it's grayed out because the font is in gray, but two, it's not clickable. These aren't clickable links, and I want them to be clickable links so people can easily uh, go to the other sites I'm running. And so I am going to just highlight this part and actually copy it, and then click on this insert edit link, and then where URL is, I'm going to paste, 
and it automatically adds this HTTP colon slash slash. And so when I hit add link, it turns this into a clickable link. So instead of just showing text, uh, these will be clickable link do links down there. So let me just do that to all of these. Whoops. Okay. Add that and save and close. And when I hit refresh, now these are all clickable links to their respective sites. Moving on, uh, this follow us uh, area, I actually do want it to have basically the same thing. So uh, in the footer number three area, there's a special widget called social media, MT social media. I'm gonna drag that in there. And I'm just gonna say follow along. And uh, here we can put the URLs for our actual profiles. Um, so twitter.com slash Hoku's talk show. It's my Twitter handle, even though I don't really use Twitter that much. Um, and then, yeah, you can put all of your other actual profiles in here. Uh, just so I don't bore you, I'm just going to put in a pound sign or number sign or whatever you want to call it. And uh, this kind of just acts as a placeholder. And if there's any of these that you don't want to show, just leave it blank and it won't show. So for instance, Google Plus, I mean, let's be honest, who uses Google Plus? So I'll just delete that and leave that blank. And you'll notice that this Google Plus uh, thing is going to disappear. So I'll hit save and refresh this. And now there's no Google Plus. So, uh, so yeah, it's not uh, showing up if you don't have if you don't have anything in it. And then for the last area, I actually just want it to be as is. I want it to show the latest posts. Um, you can, however, just drag in this latest post, MT latest post widget, and customize it. So instead of it showing just two latest posts, I want it to show three. And instead of saying latest posts, I want it to say latest tutorials. Hit save and refresh it. And there we go. So now I've customized uh, the footer by adding and customizing different widgets. One of the last things we're going to do is add a contact form to this contact us section. And to do so, we will go to plugins, add new. And we're going to look up contact form 7, which is a great plugin for uh, creating contact forms. Install and activate. And now, if we go to the customizer, uh, you can see right here it has this theme documentation. And documentation is uh, basically like how to guides, or it's like the how to manual, the manual for how to use something. So, for the theme, it's, it's the manual on how to use this theme. And so, they have uh, different questions that they've answered here. And uh, what we're looking for is some guidance on how to add a contact form. So it actually says after you've installed the plugin contact form, 7, contact form 7, which we just did, after doing that, copy and paste the code below into contact, contact forms, and then your contact form. So I'm just going to copy all this and make sure you uh, have everything. If you're missing, you know, for instance, a bracket, it might uh, break something. So I'm going to copy it, I'm going to exit out of here, and now that I have uh, this contact form 7 installed, I have this thing that says contact, I hit contact forms, by default there is a contact form generated, and I'm going to highlight all this and delete it and add what I copied just barely from the documentation instead, hit save, and now if I go to uh, the customizer, so if, if we look at the theme, it says no contact form selected, go to customize, contact section, and then select a contact form from the drop down. So we'll go to the customizer, contact section, contact forms, and then select. This is that uh, contact form that we just uh, edited. And now if we scroll down, 
there we have our nice uh, contact form. And for title, instead of saying contact us, I'm going to have it say contact me because it's just for a single person freelancer. So we'll do that. Hit save and publish. And then when we hit refresh on our actual site, there we have it. Contact me with a nice contact form. And uh, this form by default is going to go to the email you use to install WordPress, which if you go to settings, you will find right here and you can change if you so desire. Each of these different sections is now pretty much complete. Just a few nitpicky items I want to uh, adjust. So right here it says what we do. And if this was for an agency, it'd be great. But if it's for just a single person freelancer, then I want to change this to say what I do. And instead of our skills right here, I would like to say my skills. And unfortunately, this theme does not allow you to change this and this wording uh, easily through, for instance, the customizer. But there is a workaround way to uh, change this wording. And so to do so, we'll go to Appearance and Editor. And back here, these are actually all the files that are used to generate this theme. And so you can actually see the actual code that is, was written to uh, generate this theme. And usually you don't want to change anything back here unless you absolutely know what you're doing. And even if you do know what you're doing, it's usually not good practice to make any changes to this because uh, when the theme updates, because the theme gets updates just like an iPhone app would, when it updates, any changes you've made back here uh, are going to be completely wiped away. So if you do make any changes back here, it better be because one, you know what you're doing, and two, uh, they better be small changes so that if you end up updating, you can easily just put those changes back in. And uh, that is the case for uh, this change that I'm about to make. So uh, section uh, hyphen about dot PHP, I'm going to go into this file. And I've already ahead of time found out which files I need to edit and stuff. I'm not just randomly uh, saying, oh, maybe it's in this file. I've already figured out which ones need to be changed. And so the about uh, section file is generating this right here and so there's a place where it's telling it to put our skills so I'm just going to command control F uh, for our skills and right here I'm going to replace where it says R I'm going to just put my skills now I'll hit update and refresh and now you can see it says my skills and then right here, I want it to say what I do, not what we do. And so the file to change for this is called section intro. So I'll click on that and then I'll uh, search for what we do. And there it is. So now instead of uh, we, I'm going to say what I do. So that's it. Just those changes. Obviously, uh, very small changes so even if I end up updating the theme I could easily go back and make those changes again if I want to and now it says what I do right there we've now customized all the different sections of the site and there is only one last final thing to do and so up here if we hover over this hamburger menu you'll see the nav bar or uh, menu pops out right here and these all use uh, anchor links, something we talked about earlier, which means it just links to a different spot on the same page. It doesn't take you to a new page. And uh, this is a default menu that was uh, already created for us. And everything is great except a couple of things. One, we disabled team, so this section doesn't even exist, so I want to get rid of that on the menu as well. And then instead of saying news for where the... Uh, video tutorials are. I'd like it to say something else, maybe say tutorials or something like that. And so to create your own custom menu, you go to appearance and then menus. And here menu name, you can put anything you want. This is just for you to know uh, which menu it is you're talking about. It won't be displayed anywhere. So I'll just put uh, header menu, create menu. And I can add some of the pages 
from this website. I can add some of the posts or I could add custom links and I'm going to add custom links. And so if you remember to create an anchor link, I just put the uh, regular domain or URL and I need to make sure I paste over this stuff. So I'll delete the existing HTTP and paste it. You see I already have my HTTP. And then after the forward slash, I put the number sign and then the name of the tag. And in this case for about, it's just called about. So I will put about. And then uh, link text is what we want to appear right here. So if I want to change it to say about us or about, about me or my skills, I could do that. And so let's just put, uh, for instance, my skills add to the menu and I'm just going to check this so that uh, the menu actually shows up in the header so now let's just uh, keep making some more of these uh, anchor links so the next one is recent works so I'm going to paste the regular domain and then after this forward slash put uh, number sign works was the name of that tag and I'll just put recent works right here add to menu testimonials is the name of the next uh, tag name or for uh, the anchor link so testimonials and I'll put testimonials in here as well if I could spell all right then team I'm not I don't want a uh, team a button or link on my menu so I'll just skip over that and then for news so the name of the tag to that area of the page is news but I want to call it something else I want it to appear up here as uh, tutorials so paste this in number sign news and then right here I'll put tutorials add to menu and then my last one contact so delete that paste in number sign contact and then I'll just call this contact, add to menu, and we can rearrange things if we want to, but it's good as is. And so I'll hit save menu, refresh the page, and here's my nice new menu. You can see team and owner exists, and instead of news, we have tutorials. And if you click any of them, it uh, takes you down to that area of the page. You should now know everything you need to know to make this entire site from scratch. And if you ran into any issues along the way, feel free to leave your questions in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you would like, subscribe, or comment on the video. Uh, it really helps a lot and the more activity there is, the more videos I'll make. If you're looking for more training on how to use WordPress, I teach a premium course that goes very in depth on how to use all the different ins and outs of WordPress, as well as other web tips like SEO or how to make a logo. So if you're interested in that, you can go get it at course.buildwithoutcode.com or by following the link in the description. Thanks again for watching and best of luck.